you know, this case has become especially interesting considering that now beyond reasonable doubt, it has been proven the reason why this case was tried in a military court in Pakistan is because the very fact that Kulbushan Jadav is a spy would have never been proven by Pakistan in any other court of law, even though usually in Pakistan civilian courts are severely compromised. But even there, this case would have no leg to stand on. Padmaja, I interviewed uh, Ambassador Gunter Mulak, uh, Park, you know, uh, Germany's former ambassador to Pakistan. And in that long interview to India Today, he said that while he was still ambassador to Pakistan, he was in Karachi, and that's where he picked up from the grapevine that Kulbhushan Jada was actually abducted from Iran and sold by, uh, you know, Taliban is what he'd said, but Jaish e Adal was the terrorist organization operating in that area and sold to Pakistan's ISI. And he said that is very common. Uh, that is point one. Point two, he also said that Vienna Convention on Consular Access should have been given since both India and Pakistan are signatories not just to the Vienna Convention but also to the additional protocol. So as you, are, as you very rightly pointed out that Pakistan could not have been able to prove this case in a civil court of law and even now when this case is argued on merits, uh, Pakistan will have to produce evidence uh, which Pakistan so far has not done in public domain. They've only given India and the world a list of dates that such and such thing happened at such and such date. That is what Sartaj Aziz did. But what transpired? What was the evidence? Who was his defending officer? Was he given an opportunity uh, to cross-question the eyewitnesses or the evidence that had been put against him? All of that, a charge sheet, a verdict, uh, on what basis did they arrive at that verdict? All of that is legal uh, jurisprudence. None of that uh, was given to Kulbhushan Jadav. None of that has been given to India. So that's a violation. So violation of the Vienna Convention, a violation of his human rights, which continue till date. His mother is desperately seeking a visa to Pakistan. She's approached the Pakistan High Commission several times. No result and no response there. She's filed a mercy petition in the Supreme Court of Pakistan, not even knowing on what basis did Pakistan arrive at such a verdict. A last-ditch attempt to save her son's life and no response from Pakistan. So these are issues that the International Court of Justice will look at at this point of time on Vienna Convention and on his human rights. Subsequently, you know, also the argument, Padmaja, if I may, just for 30 seconds, the argument that they said that Commonwealth countries do not approach the International Court of Justice, which is what India had said in 1999 after the Atlantic was shot down uh, by the Indian Air Force. It is, it is very, very critical to note that Pakistan bilaterally has not responded despite 16 attempts made by India to get access to Kulbhushan Jadav. So when bilaterally there was no forward movement for one year is when India as a last-ditch effort approached the International Court of Justice. And on these aspects, I spoke to Ambassador Gunter Mulak, former German ambassador to Pakistan. Let's just listen in to what he said. According to the Vienna Convention, I mean, India would have the right to get in contact with the person if he is an Indian being arrested in a foreign country, so the embassy should be uh, allowed to be in contact. We have the same case with Turkey, actually, with it. In Karachi, you said that uh, uh, your information was that he was arrested by the Taliban and sold to ISI. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I said it there because it was a rumor given to me by some people saying, well, um, but the, the Taliban are actually also active in parts of uh, Balochistan, on the border to, to Afghanistan. Uh, apparently it happened in, in these areas that when they arrest somebody, uh, they try to get the most out of it, so they sell it to the party which gives them the most money. I mean, this has happened in several criminal cases, you know, of kidnapping and then uh, selling or reselling people not only in Pakistan, but also in other countries, like in Syria, for example. You are firmly of the opinion that uh, India should have got consular access irrespective of where he was yes. uh, picked up and what circumstances he yes, was picked up in. Definitely. If he is any, any embassy or consulate general has the right to, 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 to have contact with any citizen uh, who is being arrested or who is being yeah, arrested or accused for something in a foreign country. This is the normal, according to the Vienna Convention.